October 1995, Pastor Idowu Leonade and his wife, Pastor Shiju, then ushers at the Redeemed Christian Church of God RCCG Freedom Hall, received a letter to proceed to Victoria Island, Lagos, Nigeria to set up a mega church that would be called the King's Court Chapel at the upscale Lagoon Restaurant. They were to be supported by Pastors Jide and Rosemary Koku and Pastor Spencer and Grace on Nosodi. This assignment left Pastor ID, as he is warmly called, distraught and deeply agitated about how to start. It was while in this vulnerable mood that God, in his majesty and grandeur, appeared to him in a solemn night vision, speaking to a future of exceeding greatness. And so, while still asleep, he found himself in Washington, D.C., inside the Lincoln Memorial, standing before the iconic statue of the revered late 16th American President Abraham Lincoln. But the statue was without the head of the American leader, obviously used as a representation of God sitting on his throne in heaven. This vision of exceeding greatness would strengthen and inspire him and his wife to strive always to do great things for a great God. Indeed, it was while in this parish they met with the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboye, fondly called Daddy G.O. and his wife, Pastor Mrs. Fulu Adeboye, Mommy G.O. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The soft-spoken, humble, but incisive general overseer had stunned the global Christian community with his vision of the model parish that caused an unprecedented phenomenal growth and spread of the modest church he inherited, spreading across Nigeria, Africa, Europe, and the rest of the world. During one special Holy Ghost service in the month of March, the general overseer invited Pastor I.D. to his office at the Redemption City. It was at this meeting that the G.O. laid bare his vision before Pastor I.D. The globally respected spiritual leader told him that God was about to do great things in Nigeria and across the global environment, that God would raise men and women from the RCCG that would do exploits and magnificent things for the creator of heaven and earth. He then revealed to him that he, Pastor Ido Iliomade, was one of the men that God had chosen to lead the global transformative exploits, and importantly, that God specifically chose him because of his commitment to the cause of the gospel and good work. The G.O. gave him a glimpse of the greatness of the work that God was about to embark on and added that the church would soon be speaking in terms of billions and that even the church ushers in the near future would be flying in for some church services, meetings and events in their helicopters. When Pastor I.D. returned to King's Court, he and his wife, Pastor Shiju, would lead the church to start the King's Fund and engage the high-end fund managers, ARM, to manage the fund because he thought that this King's Fund could probably grow into billions as envisioned by the G.O. Still, in his quest to grow the financial strength of the church in order to be able to support the cause of the gospel and good work, Pastor I.D. and Pastor Shiju led the King's Court Chapel to conceive of a 10-story building that would encompass a worship place, corporate offices, and event venues to enable the church generate funds for kingdom work. They were inspired by what King David said concerning his building project in 1 Chronicles 22.5 that what we should build for our great God must be exceeding magnifical of fame and of glory throughout the world. Just as Solomon, his son, said in 2 Chronicles 2.5 that the house which I build is great, for great is our God above all gods. And so they acquired a place in the heart of Victoria Island, Lagos, produced the design that had a roof 
like an open Bible for the ten-story edifice and laid the foundation. Pastor I.D. and Pastor Shiju could not stay to see the finishing of this building project they were so passionate about as the much-loved head of their papa family, Pastor Esko Mfon, passed on to glory in 2007 and they were transferred to the City of David COD with Pastor I.D. as the new head of Apapa family, whilst Pastor Shiju was to serve as the head of the women in the family. Pastor Esko left behind his adorable wife, Pastor Bingbei Nfong, and children, an outstanding, loving and caring leader with a father figure aura who will always be remembered for his pioneering works that stood him out as a distinguished leader. At COD, the headquarters of a papa family, Pastor I.D. and Pastor Shiju discovered that the church had already piled for the building of a permanent sanctuary within the precinct of the present church at Dideolu Estate. But blessed with the grace to continually do audacious things for God and spurred by the GO's vision for RCCG to do exploits globally, they opted for a larger parcel of land owned by the church located right opposite the church building at Oniru Estate. The indefatigable ex-deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Pastor Ernest Ebi, MFR, with utmost support of his dear wife, Pastor Mrs. Lizzie Ebi, was chosen as a building committee chairman to lead the church in the quest to accomplish this God-inspired, audacious vision. The journey to Trinity Towers had begun. Indeed, the zeal of the Lord over this building project became palpable from the very start, altering all the plans of the church to show that He is the builder of Trinity Towers and no one else could take the credit. The first hurdle was getting the consent of the original owners of the land because the land was designated to be an open space. The church had also discovered that there was a pending 350 million naira loan used to purchase the land which needed to be repaid. And here again, God showed he was zealous for the actualization of his building as the church raised the fund pronto. And then the critical issue of getting Lagos State Government's approval for the building, designed to be a six-story edifice. When the approval was finally given, it was for a 14-story building. Was it a mistake? The church has also used this period of negotiations and seeming impasse to also build the Highbrow Riverbank Schools and Healing Stripes Hospital a dialysis and diagnostic center, as well as embarked on hunger eradication and economic empowerment programs. Indeed, through its eight spheres of spiritual governance, Shembag, COD, has contributed to poverty alleviation and fighting hunger through establishing free daily feeding centers, weekly feeding of prisoners, contributing to healthcare through subsidizing treatments and sometimes free of charge, promoting quality education, skills acquisition, and economic empowerment, media, culture, sports, installing solar-powered streetlights, road projects, and traffic lights, among other laudable projects. By 2015, all issues concerning the land had been resolved. An excited congregation, driven by a sense of purpose, came out to make pledges some even more than they could afford. Because of the palpable zeal of the Lord they saw in the building project and the awesome testimonies of those who gave so much to partner with God, chronicled in the book Audacity of Faith, the church specially commends the chairman of the finance committee, Dr. Herbert Wigwe, CON, MD, CEO, Axis Bank who went beyond the call of duty to ensure that the needed funds were raised and made available for the project. This faith and fervor to give became escalated in crystal terms with the visit of the G.O. and his wife, Pastor Folu Adeboye, 
Mommy G.O. to the church. Noticing the billboard of the proposed building, the G.O. made a prophetic statement. And by the way, I can see a picture over there from the window. I believe that is your building that we are talking about. Well, by the grace of God, uh, I will soon be back to dedicate it. The G.O. and Mommy G.O. also made very significant donations. And I hope this one will not be on record, but I would love to make a little contribution of 10 million naira. The church also developed highbrow strategies to raise funds for Trinity Towers. Pastor I.D. and Dr. Pastor Shiju wrote 25 books, with all the proceeds donated to the Trinity Towers project. One of Pastor I.D.'s most distinctive books, titled The Intentional God, An Odyssey on Purpose, has a foreword written by the General Overseer, Pastor E.A. Adeboye, where the venerated pastor distinguished the book from other great books. In his words, there are many great books out there, written on purpose and destiny. But Pastor Iliomade's book, The Intentional God, An Odyssey on Purpose, is special and unique in that it is a product of years of experience of a man who has discovered his own purpose who is living his purpose and remained in his purpose. Dr. Pastor Shiju Iliomadi's books, The Gift of Pain and What Kind of Love Is This, depict a courageous and inventive lawyer's seminal voyage into the crucible, the intensity of pain that the Lord Jesus was subjected to in the tragic presence of his mother and excruciating pain of betrayal, respectively. But for this publisher and convener of Arise Women's Conference and Arise Walk for Life, what kind of love is this? Enunciates the need for a paradigm shift from pain to love, since to betray is death, to love is life. My God Thinks by Tonye E. Cole, Start Up to Fortune, by Hyacinth Ene Ojo Aneke and Folashade Femi Lawals, When God Says No, are among the repertoire of intellective works solely dedicated to raising funds for the Trinity Towers project. There is no doubt that this sophisticated building justifies all the prayers, profound strategies, and the financial resources invested to achieve its outcome. A delightful, world-class, plush edifice, aesthetically amplified by the extraordinary artistic stained glass of the Progetto Arte Poli Studios and founded by the world-renowned master Albano Poli with a spark of genius and excellence in creativity and art evocative only of the St. Peter's Basilica. Master Albano Poli is revered for his great works in the St. Peter's Basilica, including the ambo used by the Pope for his homilies. His Royal Majesty, or by Abdul Wasiu Omogbolaon Lawal, an alumnus of the London School of Economics and Political Science, Harvard Kennedy School of Government, and the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania, USA, spoke on the magnificence and captivating impact of Trinity Towers. Indeed, the testimonies of those who sowed into Trinity Towers illuminated God's word in Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But in the words of Pastor I.D., Trinity Towers is an unending project. Because when Trinity Towers is fully completed, with all the corporate offices, events and conference halls, advertising and branding possibilities well exploited to the glory of God, part of the rents from this edifice will be used to further intensify COD's commitment to the cause of the gospel and global Christian social responsibility.
GCSR. Today, to the glory of God, the Trinity Stars is standing. Um, it's only the zeal of God that could have done this. No man could take this honor unto himself. And we have to thank God Almighty um, who has made this possible. Um, we thank um, God that brought us together, that you are, we are united in vision and purpose. We want to thank the General Basia uh, and Momichu who God used to birth the vision of their Papa family. And also we want to thank all those that have been in our journey uh, from King's Court to where we are right now. Uh, we've come a long way. Um, some of those that have been quite instrumental to our lives um, uh, have passed on. Uh, we want to remember our fathers um, that God used to lay the foundation. Uh, we celebrate our mothers uh, who are still alive. Incidentally, both of them are turning 90 years this year. Um, we want to celebrate them. I uh, want to celebrate um, Pastor Esko Umfo um, of blessed memory. He loved us. We served God. We served Him. Um, and um, we thank God for the foundation of faith and brotherhood uh, that He laid uh, on which we are building on. We thank God for Pastor Big Bay Umfo, um, a lovely woman of God for the support that she has given us um, at the City of David. We want to thank um, every member of the City of David for accepting us and for loving us. Um, we've seen so much love. Um, we want to thank also um, every member of the church. Um, and concerning the building, we want to thank um, our leader, um, Pastor Ernest Ebi and Auntie Lizzie um, is an easygoing leader with a listening ear and a man of great wisdom. Um, and God has used him to lead us thus far. I want to thank um, the Vice Chair. I want to thank um, Dr. Herbert Migwe and his wife. I want to thank my sweetheart um, and all those that held up our hands and supported this vision the building committee, uh, the consultants, and everybody that worked um, on this project. Um, we want to thank um, also the transition committee. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank my sweetheart and my our children, um, Jola Tudu and Tudu, who supported us also. But most especially, I, I just want to really, really appreciate my, my sweetheart. Um, Honey, without you in my life, uh, you know, I'd be dead, you know. I couldn't <laughs> even have done that. So I'd be dead, really, you know. And I really want to appreciate you. And I pray that um, by chance, maybe I did. I stepped out of line. You have to forgive me. We are on camera. Um, and I love you with every part of me. I love you tomorrow. I love you throughout eternity. And I pray that together we will reign with him and we will not lose our salvation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please. Um, I'd like to congratulate uh, my pastor, my husband, my sugar, and also in congratulating you, I congratulate myself that we have stayed the course. We have kept the faith. We have shared the vision and implemented the vision. And there's still much more in store if the Lord tarries. I would like to congratulate at this moment my dear father and mother in the Lord, Pastor Iye Adibui, and my beloved mother in the Lord, Pastor Mrs. Fulu Adibui. Congratulations, sir and ma. Your journey to Bagada that day, and we never knew, is to birth such. We want to say thank you to the city of David. There was a vision, but you allowed the vision to take root. 
but not only did it take root, it blossomed and it is flourishing. Thank you, Cecil David. No question, as the GO and mother in Israel, Pastor Mrs. Fulu Adeboye dedicates the Trinity Towers this Sunday, February 12, 2023, to the glory of God for his zeal over this structure, for keeping his word, and for the testimonies of those who partnered with him, the ultimate builder, to make today possible. We rise in ovation for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as we shout, Hallelujah! Amen! <laughs>